In the Ultra Kill universe, there is only one enemy type that is native to the layers of hell and serves as the Guardians. That group of enemies are known as demons. Demons emerge through their infusion of hell mass into a shell, giving rise to large structures that are sometimes humanoid-like. Their distinctive features include a stone-like exterior, and thanks to the hideous mass, a blood-red interior. While demons are acknowledged for their heightened intelligence when compared to Husk, they remain limited in rational thought and communication. As of right now in the Ultra Kill universe, there are three different categories of demons. Lesser demons, greater demons, and supreme demons. Demons are known for being sturdy, slow moving, and are commonly first introduced as bosses. A noticeable trend among demons is that the greater in size they are, and the more hell mass they have acquired, the more power they will possess. The demons native to hell have mastered the usage of hell energy, and because of this, they have acquired some of the most powerful and unique abilities in the entire game. In this video, we will discuss every type of demon in the Ultra Kill universe so far, and the lore that is hidden behind them. Let us first begin with the Malicious Face. The Malicious Face is a giant stone-like head that appears to be sculpted to have a face and engravings on the top reminiscent of a brain. They give the illusion of floating in the air, but upon closer examination, they are revealed to be supported by four translucent spider-like limbs. These peculiar limbs allow them to maintain their eerie levitation. However, upon their demise, these spider-like appendages vanish, causing the massive head to plummet to the ground, resulting in a shockwave felt by all. The unique design and mechanics of malicious faces make them intriguing and formidable adversaries within the Ultra Kill universe. Close quarters combat with a malicious face is not to be taken lightly, because as stated before, the demons in Ultra Kill have mastered the usage of hell energy. And although the malicious face may be the least intelligent of all the demons, it is far from weak. The malicious face possesses the ability to launch bursts of hell orbs and can launch a charged laser blast that detonates upon impact. Malicious faces have a very sturdy exterior, allowing them to be invulnerable to explosives. But once enough damage has been inflicted, cracks on the surface begin to be visible. This is when the malicious face will enrage. In the blink of an eye, the exterior shell changes to a red hue, and the eyes will emit a yellow piercing glow. In this state, the malicious face will aggressively attack their opponent. Of all the demons in the Ultra Kill universe, malicious faces are by far the most common and incredibly dangerous, especially in groups. Although malicious faces are one of the most common demons in all of Ultra Kill, they are one of the most memorable of the lesser demons. The next demon we will discuss are another fairly common demon, and are one of the only demons we see in an inactive state. Cerberi are the formidable guardians of hell, loom as colossal, featureless humanoids draped in stone as their skin, clasping a yellow-orange energy orb that curiously takes the form of an apple. They possess the ability to hurl it at their adversaries with deadly precision. Among their solemn duties is safeguarding the very door that bears the renowned quote from Dante's Inferno. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Despite their imposing presence, the majority of Cerberi spend their days in complete dormancy, resembling little more than lifeless statues. In this dormant state, the Cerberus remains anchored to its pedestal, seemingly immersed in contemplation of its enigmatic energy orb. However, when roused to action, they unleash their mighty powers, proving to be fearless foes that demand both caution and skill from those daring enough to confront them. Similarly to Malicious Faces, Cerberi are very strong in groups. But unlike Malicious Faces, Cerberi will not enrage when their hard exterior is cracked. Instead, they showcase their protective tendencies by only enraging whenever a comrade has fallen, whenever a fellow Cerberi has crumbled by the hand of an intruder in hell. In this state, they become extremely violent, move much faster, and will attack much faster. Cerberi showcase their power by always keeping an energy orb in a stable state within their palm. This feat requires a considerable amount of focus and effort. It is speculated that they do this to showcase their power and scare off potential intruders into hell. The Cerberi of hell lay in wait, pondering their apple. The final lesser demon in the Ultra Kill universe is the only demon that is sometimes mistaken to be from a heavenly origin, and is also the only demon that is known to be modified by an external source. Idols take the form of statues depicting a robed figure cradling a child. These statues feature a captivating radiant blue light that engulfs their heads, causing a heavenly aura to their presence. Concealed beneath the floor, these idols possess a substantial spiral base that remains hidden until they are activated. Once awoken, these enigmatic idols come to life, 
spinning gracefully and illuminating a divine light upon the blessed enemy. Their mystical power serves as both a blessing and a curse, bestowing favor upon their chosen recipient while simultaneously posing a significant threat to those who stand in their way. The idol's mesmerizing design and potent abilities make them a captivating and challenging aspect of the Ultra Kill experience, adding depth and intrigue to the world in which they reside. Encounters with awakened statues must be taken cautiously. Although idols are easily mistaken for divine beings, they're actually created using the same process as other demons. However, due to the limited space within their small shells, they cannot contain a significant amount of hell mass, unable to move or act. Originally, these idols didn't possess a divine appearance. Rather, they were meticulously carved into their presence shaped by ferrymen during their travels across the layers of hell. This act of compassion and tribute to angels, especially Gabrielle, was believed to have earned them mercy. During the painstaking carving process, the idols were in close proximity to the ferryman's holy cloth, causing its sacred power to infuse into them. This bestowed upon them the ability to continue the chain of compassion by protecting others from physical harm. Fortunately, Gabriel, the sole angel from heaven's higher order watching over hell, is the only one aware of these beings' existence. If the council discovered them, they would likely be deemed perverse deviation from the divine form in order to be destroyed by the very ferrymen who had bestowed them with a chance of life, making their existence precarious and hidden from scrutiny. The intelligence of an idol is unknown, however they do have a hierarchy when it comes to prioritizing who they bless, hinting at some form of critical thinking. The next demon we will discuss is an extraordinary rarity, born from an overflow of hell mass poured into a single shell causing it to burst at the seams and resulting in a massive entity. That entity is the Hideous Mass. The broken seams of the Hideous Mass grants them remarkable mobility without requiring any bending of their stone-like exteriors. This mobility, combined with the relentless infusion of Hell Mass, has resulted in a level of hardening unmatched by most demons. This extreme hardening makes the Hideous Mass virtually invulnerable to all known forms of attack leaving the only spots where it can be injured is where the hell mass is visible. The hideous mass has a strong resemblance of a scorpion, dominantly composed of featureless meat. Concealed by protective armor, face-shaped armor protects its front, and mouths appear to be at the end of its arms. Surprisingly, an actual head with four fangs emerges from atop its body. It possesses six long legs. The creature wields a long lobster-like tail that can launch harpoons at its foes. Engraved on the forearms of the hideous mass depicts the famous painting by Michelangelo of Adam and God about to touch fingertips. On the left side is Adam laying on the ground, while God on the right comes from the heavens surrounded by angels. Its tactics are dynamic, shifting between an upright stance and a prone form. If a hideous mass endures significant damage, it will enrage. It will choose to focus killing its enemy rather than protecting itself by flipping onto its back and attacking vigorously, while simultaneously exposing weak points, leaving itself vulnerable. The emergence of these near indestructible creatures poses a significant challenge to those who encounter them, demanding innovative tactics and newfound strength to stand a chance against these formidable foes. Their scarcity and impervious nature make them a legendary and fearsome sight within the dark corners of the Ultra Kill universe. As of right now, the Hideous Mass is the only greater demon in the Ultra Kill universe and is an awe-inspiring adversary within it. The next demon we discuss is the only supreme demon so far in the Ultra Kill universe, is responsible for the destruction of a ferryman's ship, roams the ocean of Styx, and is comprised of a unique type of Hell Mass. This colossal demon is the Leviathan. Unlike typical demons that arise from generic hell mass, the Leviathan takes form from the bodies of the Solon, a term for those who reside in the Ocean of Styx and have forsaken the struggle for air, now condemned to eternal drowning at the ocean's depths. In their state of motionlessness, the Solon eventually become fused together by the same mystical force responsible for creating other demons, thus giving birth to the biblical Leviathan, an abomination prophesied to play a significant role in the world's ultimate demise. Within the Leviathan's heart, the souls of the Solon are comprised, enduring ceaseless torment as their flesh, veins, and nerves writhe and mutate, 
This heart sought to escape its corporeal confines, but its attempt was ceased by Gabriel, who used his divine spear to strike down and immobilize it atop the creature's head. Despite the world's end, the Leviathan remains ensnared in the ocean Styx. Its monstrous form continuously elongates, with each addition of wrath sinners who surrender to their despair and sink into the depths of the ocean. Similarly to the hideous mass, the Leviathan manifests numerous sculptured faces and bodies, though taking the form of a colossal sea serpent. Its head presents an unusual humanoid protrusion with four arms atop its jaw, while its back is adorned with arms instead of the typical spine. Along its underbelly, one can observe the faces of the Solon, each contributing to the Leviathan's ever-increasing length as they become part of its monstrous form. Functioning as the Leviathan's heart is a filleted humanoid positioned behind the demon's head. This figure appears to have erupted from the mass itself before being restrained within the creature's flesh by angelic lances in the shape of crosses. Atop the Leviathan's head, the heart always has a pair of hands clutched to the cheeks, resembling the popular painting known as the Scream. Interestingly enough, the heart can also be heard endlessly screaming if you stand close enough to it, bolstering the reference. The Leviathan has the capability to launch an absurd amount of hell orbs at its adversary, showcasing the immense power it has developed from the Sea of the Solon. The Leviathan is grotesque, powerful, and colossal, making it by far one of the coolest and most memorable boss fights in all of Ultra Kill. These are the five confirmed demons right now in the Ultra Kill universe. However, I would be remiss if I did not mention a new character that is coming into play once the violence layer is released, and has currently been named the Mannequin by the Ultra Kill community. The Mannequins possess a white humanoid form, somewhat resembling a feminine figure, but this appearance is accented by bloodstains oozing from the joints on the exterior. Their most striking characteristic is their upside-down face, exhibiting a neutral expression. Their limbs are an amalgamation of multiple arms intertwined, with merging hands at the end of each arm. To add to their unsettling design, the feet are fashioned in the likeness of hands as well. Although the abilities of the mannequin are unknown, it has been seen that the mannequin will not move whenever it is being looked at, making this character induce fear rivaling that of something wicked. As of right now, this is really all the information we have on this unique character, but once Act 3 is out in the violence layer is playable, I will do a full form video on this character. And now this is the official end of the video. I would of course like to thank my patrons for helping make videos like this possible. Which one of the demons is your favorite demon and why? And what do you think the mannequin's abilities will be besides the fact that it can only move when it's not being looked at? And also, what are you really hoping to see in the violence layer? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and speculations down in the comments below. And well everyone, I most certainly hope you enjoyed the video, and like always, I most certainly hope I will cut you guys in the next one. Peace.